Greetings. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to worship at Mount Olive on this unique celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. I am Pastor Glenn Munson, one of the pastors here at Mount Olive, and it is so good to have you. And we pray God's blessings on your worship with us today. A special welcome to any who are worshiping for the first time. A special blessing on you this day. Shortly, worship will begin with the musical proclamation, I know that my Redeemer lives. If you have not yet done so during this time, we invite you to uh, light a candle and find a small bit of bread or cracker, wine or juice for the Holy Communion, which we will serve later in the service. Our worship today has many participants. Deacon Travis Beck is leading all the music, much of it pre-recorded by our Mount Olive Brass and our soloists, Sarah Kowalski and Jason Sinwell. We thank them for their part. Also, uh, Travis is joined in the sanctuary, or I am joined in the sanctuary with Travis by intern pastor Luke Hollander, our presiding minister today. And joining us remotely is Pastor Lisa Jenke, who will lead the children's moment. Um, Richard Bruxford Culligan, the cantor of the Olive Branch, who will lead the psalm. And uh, David and Carol Joyce, our assisting ministers. Uh, we thank them all. As always, if you are blessed by these services, we invite you to find the Donate Now button on the homepage of the Mount Olive website and make an offering following worship today. And so with that, we enter into worship.
Christ the Lord is risen. Death has now been vanquished. The stone is rolled away. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, God of mercy, we no, we no longer look, look for Jesus among, among the dead, dead for, for he, he is, is alive and has become, become the Lord of life. life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. I mean, close to the screen for children's time. Happy Easter. This morning I wanted to talk to you about some things that are going on that might not make a lot of sense to you right now. That first thing is how we're being asked to stay home all the time. You can't see your friends like you are used to, maybe not going to school or preschool or daycare. And we're talking about germs all the time too. It makes me think of this song that I heard in a movie recently. It goes something like this. This will all make sense when I am older. Someday I will see that this makes sense. Do you know what movie that's from or who sings that? I've been trying to remember and it's just so hard. I thought maybe you could help me. Do you know who sings it? I think, I think the character is made of snow maybe? If only there was something I had that would help you figure out who I'm talking about. What? I have him on my necklace? Oh yeah, this is the person. Do you know who this is? That's right, it's Olaf. Have you been telling me that this whole time and I didn't hear you? Ugh, silly Pastor Lisa. Well, Olaf sings this song about how everything will make sense when he's older. And you know what? That's true when it comes to talking about this coronavirus. When you're older, you're gonna understand why we're making you stay home and why maybe people are working from home and all sorts of things are different. That will make sense. But there's a second thing I was thinking about that doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's about what we're talking about today in church. We're talking about Easter, how Jesus died, and then on Easter morning was alive again. That one's hard to make sense of. And here's the thing, just because you're older and an adult, like your parents or your grandparents and even your pastors, it doesn't always make sense. Because it's just not something that is completely normal that we're used to. But do you know that even if it doesn't make sense, it could still be really good news? Here's what I want you to know. There's some things that are always going to be a little mysterious to us. We won't fully understand them, but we can still talk about them. We can still try to figure them out. And then we have to remember what the good news is today. And that is that even when we face the scariest things, 
the hardest things and the saddest things. That will never be the last thing. What Jesus does is he does something that makes us know that there will always be a day when we will be happy again, when we will laugh again, when we will celebrate again. That's the promise that we have today. And it's really good news. Even if it won't make sense when we're older. Happy Easter, everyone. I can't wait to see you in person. Psalm 118, God's love endures forever. If if you're with somebody right now, say it out loud to them. God's love endures forever. Your part goes like this. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. God's love endures forever. Oh, give thanks. says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you. And you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and you shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. 
He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and risen Christ, how we praise you this day for the great proclamation that indeed you have defeated death. You have defeated all those things that cause us to be afraid. And you have said to the whole world, do not be afraid. And Lord, how we need to hear that word this day. How this whole world needs to hear that word this day. And so we pray that that word would go out strong. And that we would know that indeed you have risen. You have risen this day and for all time. Hallelujah. Amen. Dearly beloved of God. The date was February 26th of this year. Just a little over six weeks ago, in liturgical time, 40 days ago, it was Ash Wednesday. Do you remember what words you heard that evening in worship? They were said to you as you received the sign of the cross upon your brow. Remember, you are dust. And to dust you shall return. It was our annual reminder of our mortality. And then only 10 days later, on March the 6th, do you remember what words you heard on the evening news that night? COVID-19 has now been confirmed in the state of Minnesota. It was now another reminder of our mortality. And here we are, 40 days past Ash Wednesday, with more than a thousand cases in Minnesota, scores of people hospitalized, and dozens dead. It's strange, it's like it's been Lent forever, or more precisely, like we've been stuck in Ash Wednesday forever. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. We see signs all around us of how seriously we take this fact. People wearing face masks wherever they go, our continual washing of our hands and sanitizing everything we touch, Pictures of medical staff in gowns and goggles and gloves and face shields. And yes, pictures of people dying all over the world. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. If we had any doubts about our mortality, they are long gone except for maybe a few partiers on the beaches of Florida and elsewhere, and even to those brazen souls we say, you are messing with something bigger than you know. Have you not heard? You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Yes, if there was ever a year when the tomb of Jesus seemed real, it is this year. The tomb seems ever so close, and we, like the women who sat afar and watched Jesus die and be laid in that tomb, we sit and wait to see what will come next. 
Will Jesus' death be like every other death? We wonder. Will this person who gave us such hope, this one we call the Messiah, will he be lost forever? Will God have mercy? Will God do anything to end this season of fear? We ask. The answer is, God already has. Yes, God already has. It's easy to forget, but while we have been wallowing in the dust of Ash Wednesday, Jesus has been journeying to Jerusalem. We saw him talking with a woman at a well in Samaria and healing a man born blind and raising Lazarus from the dead in Bethany. We saw him entering the city of Jerusalem on a donkey and we heard that the whole city quaked at his arrival. We were mice in the corner, as it were, listening as Jesus shared his last supper with his disciples the night before he died, saying, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. What's that about, we wondered. And then we followed him to the cross, up the dusty road from the palace to Golgotha, where we saw him crucified alongside two bandits, and we heard him say even there to one of those thieves, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And again we wondered, what does that mean? And even there when Jesus died, we sensed something was different. For as Jesus breathed his last, we heard his cry of despair and we felt in our own bones the fears of this whole world laid on him. It is no wonder that Matthew tells the story of Good Friday and the story of Easter as though the whole world is changing. Perhaps we don't even notice it anymore because we've heard it so many times. But did you hear how Matthew described what was happening when Jesus died and was raised? Matthew says that there was an earthquake, a great earthquake, both when Jesus died and when he was raised. This is the sign of the apocalypse. This is the sign that everything is changing. Everything is changing, Matthew says, because of the death and resurrection of our Lord. Because of God's incredible love and power shown at the resurrection of our Lord, the earth is opening up and all the dust of our mortality is being swept into it. A great chasm has been opened up at the resurrection of our Lord and all of our fears and all of our sins and all of our social distancing from God and all sickness and pain and mourning and crying and even death itself is being swallowed up into the abyss. This is the end of death as we know it. Easter is the end of death. Yes, it's true. COVID-19 is still sickening people and causing them to die here and everywhere. And it will continue for some time. And there will be other plagues and other calamities. For as our Lord said, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes. 
for that is the way of the world. But death, as we know it, has been defeated at the resurrection of our Lord. For God says in the words of the prophet, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor powers, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dearly beloved, welcome to the end of this long season of dust. And welcome to the springtime of the resurrection, a season of new life, when we declare that everything is being made new. How? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. For our prayers this Easter morning, we will end each position with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And the congregational response will be, hear our prayer. 
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, we stand before the tomb as Mary did, grieving, confused, angry, and afraid. We thank you for reaching out to us through the resurrection, for giving us hope and strength in time of turmoil. Give us the courage to move forward as faithful witnesses to your good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We rejoice in the signs of spring season and new life as plants and trees begin to bud and birds and animals return. All your creation praises you, O Lord. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict we set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. We know that the pandemic will affect poor nations and the marginalized people more severely. Help all nations come together in peace and cooperation to lessen the suffering and bring hope and healing to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Many lives have been turned upside down because of the pandemic. Cradle the fearful, suffering and dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Be with those who are not employed and lack financial security. We pray especially for Mount Olive members who are ill, grieving, or recovering from injury. Those who are sick, recovering, anxious, homebound, or grieving because of COVID-19. And all homebound members, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks that our congregation has been able to gather and worship together through the gifts of technology. Bless the creative and helpful efforts of worship leaders who continue to work diligently to bring these services to us during this time of social distancing. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that the good news of Christ's death and resurrection might be proclaimed through our congregations in Kijota, Tanzania, and Bogota, Colombia. Grant that their good works might shine in the darkness bringing glory to God and blessing to all. We pray for protection and guidance for those brothers and sisters in Christ as they too face the perils of the global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the sacrifices of healthcare workers around the world as they provide care for all sick and suffering during the pandemic. Give them strength and courage Raise them up as on eagles' wings. Let them know their work is God's work through their hands. We pray for all in the food, transportation, public safety, education, janitorial, and social services. Keep them safe and empower them as they help. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of death and evil. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you now and in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Please share words of God's peace with one another. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Gathered at the Lord's table and around our own, we remember with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. Gave, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. With all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun, moon, and stars, we praise you, O God. Blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For those that are gathered together, I invite you to share the bread with one another, saying, the body of Christ given for you. And again, share the wine with one another, saying, The blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you that are alone, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Glenn, the body of Christ, given for you. Amen. Travis, the body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Travis, the blood of Christ, shed for you. Luke, the body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, so 
forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said, be at peace, rejoice in this good news. Alleluia.